forget to like and subscribe. And hit the notification bell. So we can go to college and get, get more knowledge. Hi, this is Gary Genzer and welcome back to Office Hours. <laughs> What does the SEC have to do with crypto? And why is the chair of the SEC talking about crypto? What do digital assets have to do with orange groves, barrels filled with whiskey, payphones? Who remembers those? And beavers? Well, it turns out a lot. None of those things, standing alone, are securities. But any one of them can be packaged into a contract for an investment that may be a security. Huh? Let me break this down a bit. The law lists a bunch of things that are securities. That list includes things you ordinarily think of, like a share of stock. Why is a share of stock always a security? If you own a share of stock in, let's say, Apple, Apple owes you a fiduciary duty, and you can hold Apple accountable if they don't fulfill those obligations. That's true no matter how you bought the stock or who sold it to you. But the law also includes something called an investment contract in the list of things considered a security. An investment contract is not like a traditional share of stock. And anyone who tells you that well, let's just say they're trying to confuse you. Investment contracts are contracts that I sell to you with the promise that I'm going to take the money you gave me and do things to increase the value of your investment. I can take a bunch of orange groves and sell those to you. That's not an investment contract. Or I can sell you some of those orange groves as part of a larger set of promises to cultivate those groves, sell the oranges, and distribute the profits back to you. That's an investment contract. So, orange groves alone, whether I sell them to you or you buy them on an exchange, no investment contract. The very same orange groves, coupled with a promise that I sell directly to you, that I am going to work to make those orange groves profitable, that entire bundle of promises is an investment contract and therefore a security. But the orange groves alone are still just orange groves. Some would like you to think that a digital token can in and of itself be a digital asset security. It can't. Standing alone, it's just a commodity or a virtual currency. As a virtual currency, you may use it for a payment. As a commodity, you may trade it like gold or oil or pork bellies. Confused? Well, I don't blame you because some have been doing their best to confuse you for years. Because the Securities and Exchange Commission only has jurisdiction over securities, not orange groves, and they don't like that. Like a hammer, they want everything to be a nail. But the law doesn't work that way. While retail holders of crypto certainly deserve protection from bad actors, not all roads lead to the SEC. Pretending to have jurisdiction when there is none is simply a political power play. It helps no one. It hurts everyone. Remember, a token by itself, not an investment contract, despite what the SEC would have you believe. I hope that helps. The train has finally left the station. Or so they have you believe. I'm happy because the case is over. Not because it finally provides clarity, but because I can finally stop talking about it. I think it was a scam from the beginning. We should be celebrating. We should be enjoying our investment. And if you know anything about this investment, then you know that there was hundreds of thousands of people who believed in it before the case even started and knew this outcome. So to those people, congratulations. We did it. We made it. Now it's time to see the true potential of this coin. Be happy, know what you hold, and understand the revolution that's coming your way. But why do you say I'm happy that it's over and that I don't have to talk about it? Let me explain. 
I find it kind of ironic. Okay, I don't. I'm lying. It's completely obvious that these relationships with XRP and Ripple were set up way before this case. And anybody who's researched it can figure that out. Here we go. Ripple joins ISDA and enters a 1.2 quadrillion derivatives market. This is humongous. Ripple has become a member of the ISDA entering a derivatives market 1.2 quadrillion. Other members include JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, BNY Mellon, among others. The ISDA has 1,000 plus institutions as members spread across 79 countries. Just look at what they say. In conclusion, Ripple's membership in ISDA is more than just a bold move. It's a declaration of its ambitions and a sign of potential growth. It symbolizes a bridge between the traditional financial world and the innovative crypto space. The future is bright for Ripple, and this membership may be the defining moment in its journey. Again, ask yourself, what other cryptocurrencies are making these type of leaps? and associations and and aligning themselves with these major players the only other one in my humble opinion is xlm who's on a level like this but not even half as much as ripple so i really don't think that the sec could have stopped the inevitable but to further my point here we go a leading financial uh, giant SBI showcases XRP usage for on-demand liquidity remittances in Japan and the Philippines. Here we go. This is another one of those plumbing situations where Ripple has set up plumbing between Japan and the Philippines. This is just one example of news that came out right after the case outcome was revealed. Here's more. Ripple XRP becomes the most traded altcoin of 2023, experts comment. Now, again, this was all spoke about openly in the XRP community. And for anybody who was there in 2019 or before, uh, that's when I entered the space, I really find it hard to believe that people were this worked up in the case because it was just common knowledge that this was going to happen as we called it back then the shakeout that's all for today see you guys on the next one